Hello and welcome once again to another bearing installation video featuring Boca bearings. Now in today's video I'm going to be installing a set of high performance Boca bearings into my own OS FS91 Surpass engine. But before I do that I want to talk briefly about the three different major design platforms for single cylinder RC four stroke engines and how that relates to today's bearing installation video. So let's get right to the table. So here on the table I've got examples of the three major design platforms for single cylinder RC aircraft glow engines. The first one here is obviously an OS Surpass engine. Now this just so happens to be an OS FS40 Surpass engine. But this features the front mounted camshaft timing area that the camshaft rides within two bearings that reside in this crankcase. One is in here and one is on this cover. So this, these Surpass engines have a total of four bearings in them. One for the front of the crankshaft, one for the rear of the crankshaft, and then the two for the, to support the camshaft. Now, many other engine manufacturers over the years copied this design uh, for whatever reason. And it's a good, solid design. Now, the next one here is a Sato engine. Now, Sato has, yet again, a forward-mounted timing camshaft, but they've done things a little bit differently. Here, they've got a camshaft that does not feature any bearings at all. It's supported and the bearing material is basically some Teflon discs for the older ones, or they went to a, uh, a very slippery steel type uh, bearing material that supports the shaft that the camshaft rides on. Another different design, very sound, very reliable, very strong, but yet there's only two bearings in this engine. One for the rear crankshaft, and one for the front of the crankshaft. So a two bearing engine, a four bearing engine. Now the last engine I've got here is an Inya design. And this also does not have the forward timing. This features all rearward timing. So all the timing gears and camshafts are in the back of the engine. But yet this is another four bearing engine. So you've got one here, one at the rear, the crankshaft, one here to support this timing shaft that engages in the connecting rod and then rotates the timing gears with the cam lobes on them. So you've got a total of four. You've got the one here and then you've also got one here on the end of this. So another four bearing design. So that's the most common of the major platforms here. And it's funny because so many other engine, uh, engine manufacturers over the years copied the OS design. Thunder Tiger did, Kyosho, ASP, and all the ASP variants, the Magnum, so, I mean, a lot of companies decided to go this particular route, but yet they never really provided any kind of a tool or extraction device to get these bearings out. And that's one of the things I'm going to talk about in the next segment here with my engine. Okay, on the table, I've got all the tools and supplies I'm going to need for this bearing installation. I've got my OSFS91 Surpass crankcase, crankshaft. Uh, the cam gear cover where one bearing will reside. I've got my vise, I've got the bearings, some lightning lube, road power to lubricate the bearings and the crank, crankshaft and crankcase before installation and my hammer and a piece of wood. And of course, protective glove and a heat gun. Now before I actually start the installation, I wanna talk about the fact that I'm only gonna be installing three of the four bearings into this OS FS91 Surpass engine because of the fact that now this bearing that comes in this little camshaft cover is quite easy to get out. In fact it's so easy what I do usually is I just make a little piece of wood here, drill a hole in it such that it allows this camshaft cover to fit in there but yet it's not flush and then all you have to do is screw this thing in place and heat it up and then just tap it and that bearing falls right out. Now the extraction of the bearing that resides here that's still in this engine is a whole other story. Now I've worked for over two hours trying to get this bearing out and there's various different techniques that people have attempted and some successfully have used over the years and I was successful in doing it also. But one of the things that you can do is, if you're, if you're lucky and if it works out, which it doesn't always work out, is you drop little pieces of candle wax down there and then with a punch that just 
punch or a wood dowel or something that just perfectly fits inside that bearing opening, the inner diameter, the ID. You just push that down in there and eventually you'll get to the point where you push enough mass in there that it should start lifting the bearing out. Well, I've only been successful at doing that one time. Another time I tried doing it on an engine, I was successful in knocking this rear cover, breaking it and knocking that out, which obviously was not a good thing at all. So another technique that I've heard of over the years also, and I think I actually employed this technique once too, is instead of using wax, you use wadded up little pieces of paper towel or tissue paper that are wet, damp, and you keep doing the same thing. Now, those techniques will only work if your bearing is a fully shielded bearing. If it's an open shield bearing, that's not going to work at all because those materials will just eventually ooze out and nothing will happen. But like I say, in of all the times I've tried it, I've only been successful in extracting one of these bearings one time. Which is what's interesting to me that so many different manufacturers copied this design and yet nobody provided a tool to actually extract that bearing in an efficient, safe, and easy manner. Which is kind of one of the problems with servicing these particular engines. Now, the caveat to that is I've also read many different times that the bearings that OS uses are always metal shielded or shielded. I've always seen metal shields on them. So they're less susceptible to being needed to being replaced because this camshaft only turns at 50% of the speed of the crankshaft and it doesn't get exposed to the fuel elements as much as other areas of the engine that would cause rust or corrosion. Now I have seen other manufacturers like ASP, I can't remember if it's ASP, but of other manufacturers of engines of this design platform that did not use uh, fully shielded bearings. And in those instances, it's like you really should replace them. But most times, if an engine has been properly maintained or it's in pretty decent shape, these bearings really don't go bad. So 90% of the time, I just don't even bother replacing them. But in this instance, for this video, I was able to get this bearing out and we're going to do a replacement on that. So that's kind of the pluses and minuses of the Surpass series in this design is that you've got these two bearings. One is easy to get out. The other one is very difficult to get out. And yet nobody ever made a tool in all these years to get one of those, those bearings out efficiently. So next step is to do the bearing installation. Now what I've got here on the table is my set of bearings, a full set of bearings, a full set of four from Boca bearings. And the first set with, for the crankshaft is the ENK 032C HP kit. Now these are ceramic bearings that I've got for this installation. Now the camshaft bearings are also readily available on Boca and it's a CSK 003 kit. So these are the bearings that we're going to be installing today, so let's just get right to it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do here is do one squirt of this lightning, Boca bearing lightning lube road power into my container so that I can use that to prep the surfaces of these bearings. So let's see here, I've got the two camshaft bearings here, obviously I only need one of them, so I'll put one of them aside, and I've got the main bearing for the crankshaft and then the front bearing for the crankshaft. So I'm going to install this small bearing first so I'm just going to use a little pipette here and drizzle some oil on the outer race of that bearing to get that prepped and then I'm going to do the same thing with the inside of this thing and get that ready to accept the bearing. So I'm going to utilize my piece of wood and a light hammer to do that, I'll get my protective glove on here. And I'm just going to heat this cover up just lightly. This helps the, the aluminum expands as it heats up and that will help facilitate that bearing installation. And 
that bearing is installed. Now I've got this piece of wood here because the shape of this crankcase is not flush. The head's fins extend beyond that. So I've got this here so this will sit stable, a stable platform for me to press that or uh, tap that bearing into place. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Let me take this off real quick. Get a little bit of oil on this outer part of the bearing here. Now these are shielded bearings, rubber sealed bearings, so they do not need any kind of lubrication at all. They're internally lubricated. Now let me do the same thing, go ahead and I'll prep this inner portion also. Once again I'm going to heat this crankcase up just a little bit, just enough to allow that a little bit of ex thermal expansion of the aluminum there. <clears throat> I think before I do that, I'm going to put a little bit of oil here and go ahead and put this rear bearing in place. Now, since this is my engine, in normal circumstances, RC aircraft glow engines, the main bearing, the rear end, the, face, the side that's facing the counterweight is usually open. This is a ceramic bearing, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave this like this, and I'm doing this partly because for an experiment of my own, just to see how it holds up, and just because I've never really installed ceramic bearings before. So that's why I'm going to use, use that, do it like that, actually. I think maybe I need to turn this thing around, potentially. I'm not sure if it really matters the direction of this thing. I think I liked it better this way. I don't think there's a it matters. Yeah, there we go. There. So now that bearing is on there, but it feels kind of tight. <clears throat> Maybe it doesn't want to be on that way. Let's try it this way again. It's interesting that it feels rather snug there. You know what, I think it's the fact that I've never really messed with a ceramic bearing before. And it's just a tighter feeling bearing. I think that's all that is. So this is my first experience with ceramic bearings. So it's possible that that just feels a little snug like that because of the construction of the bearing. I don't know. We'll see. So let me heat this case up a bit. At least for the front bearing and then I'll heat it again for the rear bearing. just dropped right into place. That's very interesting. That rarely, rarely ever happens. And I don't know if that's, I didn't even really get this that hot. So that's an interesting thing there. Let's take this piece of wood out so I can get <clears throat> this vise set up for installation of the crankshaft bearing. <clears throat> okay, so that's going to be like that. I've already lubed that up, so I'm just going to heat this case of just a hair. Just crankshaft 
in here. Look at that, the bearing, the front bearing just came right out with it. So I'm not so sure I'm loving that. Bearing is fully seated and we are good to go. So there you go. That concludes this bearing installation video for this OS FS91 Surpass engine.